Hey, Nicholas, how you doing? So I can see myself, I can, can't do this when I'm on camera. Normally I can't fix my hair, you know? Hey, Boxer Fencer, what's up, buddy? Jose Padre, how you doing, buddy? And Derek P, man. Pitzer, hey. <laughs> Animal Fat, yeah, thanks, man. I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. And uh, Mr. Panda, thanks. Hey, Laker, what's going on, bro? Hey, uh, H. Laker, are you playing on PlayStation 4? Or are you playing uh, video games with something else? Long time no see, Boxer Fencer. What, you haven't been watching my channel or what? Mountain. Of course I gave you some of the best bodybuilding advice, Taylor. Of course, that's what I'm here for because, uh, oh, you play Xbox, okay. All right, no problem. If you're on P PS4, I was telling you that I was going to tell you to jump on there. I'm under Natural Galant on PS4. If you guys want to add me on there anyway, when I play Blackout or something. Hey, Theodore. Yeah, I know uh, Taylor. Yeah, the stuff that I learned. Um, you know, I know I say do what works for you for everyone, and it's true to a point. But there are some uh, truths that I learned along the way that seem to apply to almost everyone. So uh, there's always exceptions, but. As a general rule, I do find that there's a lot of stuff that I'm sharing that is is pretty useful for a lot of people training. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I haven't boxer fencer. I haven't had too many live feeds at all. Actually, I've been kind of avoiding that because a lot of times people use me like a question and answer sort of period of time. So, uh, I don't mind answering questions sometimes, but it's a little boring. Like there's not really much creativity that goes into answering questions on a live feed. Uh, not to mention, uh, sometimes you got to find a way to make this channel supported, right? So. Uh, if people just use you for free advice all the time, sometimes it's hard to really kind of make any sort of uh, sustainable living at it, you know, to pay for the batteries and the cameras and, and the time that's spent and making all this content. So uh, yeah, you, you gotta kind of give and then uh, you have to give and get. It's kind of like a you know, give and receive, you know, it's it's uh, has to be a balance, right? So I try not to do too many live stuff because you attract a lot of people that just wanna just use you like a drive-through, right? So, okay, so what's going on? Mountain School and hello. Hey, why is this time? How you doing, bro? Okay, Nicholas Mendez, may I ask you a question from not natural people, if you know? Okay, uh, ask, ask away there, Nicholas. What's going on? What do you want to ask, buddy? I'm going to jump and do a couple little sets, two of arms in between here. I'll turn around so you'll see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of getting a half workout in, kind of pumped. Oh, yeah, yeah, Metal Man. Yeah, that campfire did turn out too well that day. Yeah, don't worry, Metal Man. We have lighter fluid now. I use lighter fluid. I don't mess around with the freaking wind and shit. This <laughs> that was brutal. And that was a cold night too. When I was trying to light a fire up on top of the mountain, mountain. And uh, I was up there and it was like blasting wind in every direction. And the wood was pretty dry, but obviously not dry enough. So yeah, that was, that was brutal. Yeah. Flex on you. That's right. Ooh. I got pale. See, I look like a freaking lizard. You know, I'm all pale underneath because I haven't like tanned at all or <laughs> the sun's just starting to come out in my area. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me see here. Uh, there was. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just waiting for that other question. The guy was going to ask me. Mike Miller, how much can you lift? That's a pretty general question there, Mike. But uh, <laughs> the quick answer is less than I used to just because of. Uh, sports in general right uh playing hockey and stuff i injured my shoulder so that kind of threw it off my groove and and uh and then i dislocated this one and i basically tore this one from a guy from a bad hit from the side and whatever and anyway the bottom line is enough excuses not quite as much as i used to but i can still lift a decent amount of weight when i put my mind to it it's just a matter of is it smart to lift that weight and sometimes it's not depending on what movement i'm doing right but i just did a video where i'm doing 400 pound bent over row so um you can watch that if you want to get impressed you know do I do leg day? Patrick, go watch my videos and come back and ask me some sensible questions. Hey, Patrick. Hey. Because uh, Patrick Miller and Mike Miller, two of the same last names. How much do I squat? Well, if you watch my videos, you would know. Uh, so, again, go watch some of my videos because those are questions that are easily answered just by uh, – um, just by watching my videos, you'll, you'll see how much I squat and how I squat. And then you'll probably ask, Oh, why do I not squat? Ask the grass or why do I not do parallel? And then I have to watch another video on what is full range of motion and just go there. So 
Yeah, I'm going to answer questions mostly from people that tune into my content. If you haven't tuned in before, I'm going to let you watch some of the videos and get educated about who you're talking to right now, because otherwise it's just going to be a long, long day. Taylor Jensen. Yeah, well, hey, Taylor. I'm giving you a shout out right now there, Taylor. Hey, Mountain. <laughs> Uh, okay, Smith Iron, who is my favorite synthwave artist? You know, I don't, I'm don't. i not really into the genre. It's not that I wouldn't listen, but I just don't even know. I don't have a lot of knowledge as far as who is the up-and-coming artist and stuff like that. I just play around on Logic Pro X and, and make some music, but I was listening to Deadmau5 quite a bit. I like I like Deadmau5, like some of Deadmau5's beats and stuff are pretty cool, and I'm working on a new beat right now and kind of applying a couple of the things I heard and what he's doing. I don't have access to the same instruments. I'm not an expert at making the different instruments and stuff that some of these guys are, are good at. They these real great producers. So I have to get some access to different instruments at some point and, and start playing around with that. I do need to increase my skill set in that area, but it's a matter of uh, where does my motivation and inspiration go at the same time. And it always comes back more to my physique and to my channel. And then I kind of veer off on these little creative endeavors like music and stuff, right? Um, but lately I've been playing a lot of video games. I'm going to admit I like I really like playing Blackout. I've been having a good time with that. I got a couple of videos uh, of me playing and, and some funny stuff happens during the game. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of like a, I like sports, uh, but at the same time I spend most of my physical energy, like lifting weights and stuff. So then I like to kind of compete or play games, doing other things. Right. So I like playing. I'm a big kid in some way, I guess. Mm -hmm. The channel. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you. You're welcome. He says, thank you for the videos. Um, do I still hit PRs? Well, you know what? H Laker actually, it's, it's not that I'm old as much as I am old. <laughs> I'm not old, old, but uh, 45 now. Uh, but it's not that I can't hit some PRs. It's just that sometimes my joints or whatever don't feel like I should, you know, or uh, it seems like my body, based on the history, based on playing hockey and stuff, like there's certain things that kind of don't necessarily feel right for me to push too hard or, or push through. Whereas sometimes it's almost like you get a, a free get out of jail card, like kind of like in Monopoly, you know what I mean? Like you can you can screw yourself up a couple times, but after you screw yourself up four or five times, you'll notice that you don't have quite the same sort of leniency on making a mistake in the gym before an injury or something like that happens. So that's why you see a lot of guys that are training for 10 or 15 years. They, they train differently than they train in the first five years because, you know, once you break something, it, it's a little bit more uh, finicky. So that said, I haven't broken things from weight training, but the sports outside of it have caused a certain amount of instability, say, with my shoulder. And, um, you know, I remember even, you know, one collision I did in hockey, I went into the boards and I hyperextended my spine. And then, of course, three days later, I was squatting four plates for sets of 25 reps and all of a sudden, dang, I just totally tweaked my back and it was a mess for several months. So some of these injuries sometimes come back to haunt you. So as far as PRs for one rep maxes, I never do that. I never try that. It's just stupid, and it just basically will injure me for sure, so I don't even bother. But as far as a PR, I never did bend over rows of 405 before in my life, before I actually filmed a video doing that, uh, and I put it up here a couple of videos ago. So, yeah, so that I'm, I'm still stronger in some ways for sure right now. Hmm. Irv Gods, thanks. Uh, says, he says awesome videos. Thank, thanks, Irv. Metal Man, uh, weren't I? Uh, no, I was never an arm wrestler. Mike Miller, he's asking if I was an arm wrestler. No. Um, okay, let me see here. Okay, some people are having a conversation with each other, so I'm trying to kind of scroll through that. Andrew Rowe, what's up, Jason? Mountain, has Canada weather been weird this year? I've been getting bizarre weather in central states. Uh, I, I guess, you know, when I think about it, it's been hot and cold a lot as far as it's not consistent. So it's not like you get this consistent temperature, but there's been a lot of like changes. Like it's, it's deviating more than it usually does. So that's kind of something different. Uh, also, there's still some forest fires and stuff like that going on already. So there's more forest fires than there usually is. So that's kind of cr crazy, right? Because usually we're, we're like the rainiest province in Canada, BC. BC is the rainiest province and uh, we're like in, in rainforest basically all over the place. And we've still been getting fires once in a while. So that's kind of weird. Some of them are man-made and everything, but it's it's just kind of a strange sort of thing. Yeah, Calvin Unruh, he says, his shoulder gets sore if he flares elbows and bench press. Well, then don't flare the elbows. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Russell Cook. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. I, mean, I was thinking about you the other day there, Russ. Yeah. When are you coming back here, man? Moving away from that shitty province you're in and uh, keeping us company at Murph's gym again. When are you going to do that? 
Patrick Miller, what are you saying there, buddy? I Are you starting to troll here? What's going on there? This is a natural bodybuilding channel, so there's no such thing as the drug use bullshit. That's, uh, that's for the other channel, so, you know, troll those guys if you want. Well, Romulo, how are you doing? Romulo, Romulo. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I recognize your name from before. Um, Jason, what variables could I use to determine the ratio of high reps versus low reps workouts during uh, some period? The variables could be, for instance, type of food intake, body fat percentage, body type, or any, any other factor. Uh, first and foremost, how you feel and, and how you look also is something to take into account. So uh, the feeling is the first and foremost thing. That's the most important thing, though. If you feel like you're constantly sore and beat up and your joints are all beat to hell, and then when you walk in the gym, uh, you're trying to do the same weight as you did before. And of course it's, it's low weight and you can feel that you're basically getting joint pain. You feel like your muscles are nodding up. You feel like everything is tweaked. Your strength is actually going down. That's, that's a sure sign that you should be doing a higher rep day. If you're going to train at all. Uh, that's, that's the biggest way that I would pay attention because there's not much sense in going into the gym and constantly going backwards, especially when it comes down to the heavyweight, because when you're weaker with heavyweight over and over again, and it's consistently going down, like to the extreme, I'm not saying just losing a rep or two, I'm saying you're losing like a lot of strength and you're sore at the same time, there's a good chance that you're going to injure yourself or tear something. So fast twitch fibers are not as forgiving as slow twitch fibers. Like you can do a lot of endurance workouts successively and get a good pump and not be as afraid of overtraining and injury. Whereas if you do heavyweight and you do this all the time, you will uh, notice overtraining and get an injury at a much faster rate. So that's something to watch out for. How you feel mostly. Um, the strength, of course, you'll see in your reps. You'll see if your reps are going down all the time. Uh, you feel like you're almost like uh, you've got the flu. Like you feel like you have the flu almost, like your system's kind of like burdened and you almost feel like you got a headache all the time. That's also a good sign that you may be overtraining. So pay attention to that. If you, that's happening, then you definitely need to lighten up the loads here and there or take an extra few days off. So as a general rule, though, I, I say 70% reps of 10 to 30, right? Set, is sets with reps of 10 to 30, 70% of your workouts and 30% of reps of anywhere from 5 to 15 reps, you know. Uh, that's, a, that's a general good place to start. And then from there, if uh, you're progressing or regressing, uh, first look at your diet. If you're not eating enough, first look at that, look at your sleep. And then look at your training and say, okay, maybe I need to go heavier more often, or maybe I am going heavy, heavy too too much. Maybe my body just does not respond to heavy weight as well as the, the higher reps. I mean, it is important to increase in strength, but remember, it's increasing in strength in every rep range, not just increasing strength in one rep maxes. That's just useless, right? And dangerous too. I have uh, somebody's asking me if I lived in BC my whole life. I was born on the East Coast in Newfoundland. And I lived there till I was about five. I lived in Iran for a year because my dad was working in the paper mill over there, year ago. And uh, then he became a, a policeman when we moved back to Canada in, in, I think it was around 79 or so. And then we moved to the West Coast. So, yeah. So I'm going to just erase the guy here. Okay. All right. Uh, Russell Cook, you got to come train soon. Yeah, for sure. You still train, man? You're so busy work and kids and everything now? Yeah, it's good. Uh, what kind of protein shakes do I recommend? I mean, if you're going to drink protein shakes, I, I think uh, whey isolate's good. I mean, I'm kind of finicky. Like some whey, whey protein shakes will make you feel like crap, even though they say they have the exact same stuff in the bottle. Some of them will make me nauseous and some of them you feel fine. So uh, in the end, though, I usually make sure that there's stevia and grass-fed whey protein might be a better option, you know. Uh, but I like it when they're grass-fed mostly. I mean, and, and they have uh, stevia in, involved instead of acetone or aspartame or sucralose. I like uh, stevia for the sweetener. No, Cooley, I never did. Ended up uh, checking out Kong Trues or whatever. I, I think – or maybe I listened to one song, but I can't remember. But uh, – but yeah, they're probably way, he's probably way higher than my music making skill set. Probably like way higher. So, yeah. Um, Justin Yi, I you know I won't make a comment about anybody that I think is natural or not natural on YouTube because the problem is is that without a personal relationship, it's pretty much impossible to say for sure. 
uh, because there's some guys that look like absolute dog crap and they are, they're not natural. So I will say some of the guys that are uh, claiming natural or not, there's, there's definitely that. Uh, and there's some people out there that are pissing on natural bodybuilding shows and saying natural bodybuilding is stupid and everything like that because they're looking at some of the shows that only urine test. And then they're seeing obviously those bodybuilders on stage are not natural. And then they're like, oh, all natural bodybuilders are not natural. And then they forget about these other contests that don't really get the same exposure because guess what? The bodybuilders are 40 pounds lighter on stage or 30 pounds lighter. So, uh, yeah, sometimes the popular ones are not necessarily natural, but some of them might be. I mean, uh, but again, I don't know a lot of them personally, not well enough to really be able to tell you. I am 100% sure there are people with better genetics than mine, and, and maybe they look better in, in a lot of ways in the prime and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I can't say for sure unless I know somebody personally, right? Okay, let me just read down here. Uh, H. Laker, creatine for strength training. Yeah, creatine could be okay for strength training, but I'd say it's probably better for strength endurance training. And the strength is usually only added to the upper body strength, not necessarily lower body for some reason. I don't eat eggs, not often. I don't find they agree with me very well, although I do like the taste of them. Yeah, you know what? Uh, as far as... Uh, Okay, there's a question here. What would I recommend as a starting point for maintenance calories for 5'9", 200 pound male with a sedentary job that trains three times a week? I don't count calories. I never have counted calories. Just start with eating a gram per pound of body weight of protein, add carbs to each meal, and have a couple tablespoons of essential fat a day. That's a good place to start. And you have your carbs and your protein, you mix them up together and your green vegetables in there that automatically helps stabilize the blood sugar a bit. The better choice those carbs are, better. Stay away from liquid carbs like sugar, like fruit juices and pop and coffee with sugar in it. If you're going to have coffee, put stevia in there instead or something like that. Or tea. Um, you know, th these are general things that you should stick to first rather than worrying about calories. Too many people worry about freaking calories, right? And a calorie is not a calorie. If you have a protein calorie as opposed to a sugar calorie, it's totally different. If you ate all of your maintenance calories and you ate it in the form of sugar, what do you think will happen to your body? So calories does not tell the whole story. It's just a general sort of story, but it's not the same thing as uh, paying attention to your macronutrients. So first start with that approximately a gram per pound of body weight of protein. In a pound of meat, there's approximately 90 to 100 grams of protein. And then, you know, you add that there. And you, you eat the lower fat meats or free range meats or meats that are more natural. Don't eat that farm fed salmon crap or um, try to get organic if you can. Try to get farm or free range if you can. Uh, try to make the best possible choice you can that way because that will also change the type of fat that comes in the meat. Hmm. Nicholas Mendez, this is, I'm a natural bodybuilder, so. You're saying, what do I prefer doing one cycle per year? I don't do any of that. I don't do any cycles, Nicholas. So why the fuck do people ask such stupid questions? Nicholas, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get on your ass here, but this is a natural bodybuilding channel. I'm a natural bodybuilder. Why the fuck are you asking me a stupid question like that? Seriously. I just don't understand why people are so dumb. Nicholas. Uh, you know, I know people like it when I call people out here. Nicholas, you're probably a really nice guy, and maybe you just don't know any better. Maybe you're used to all the other douchebag channels that are on YouTube that talk about stupid shit like that. But I'm a drug-free channel, man. That's all I promote is drug-free training because that's what I believe in, and that's what I live, and that's what I will live the rest of my life. So uh, that's that's what this is all about, drug-free training, man. Okay, Ga Gossen is a... Uh, Hey, Glenn, my calves have been cramping every night the last month when I'm about to fall asleep. It's been it's never been an issue before. I've been working out for about two years. I take magnesium supplements. Okay, Ga, one thing you have to know, just so you know, not all magnesium supplements, and this is something I didn't know, they're not created equal, okay? So try a liquid magnesium if you haven't so far and see if that is different. And if you don't get results with that, uh, find out if your potassium is off or something like that. Um, the other thing is go see a naturopath A naturopath is probably the best thing for you to do. And then from there, maybe they can give you a supplement that's better because I know some of the stuff that you get in the stores is absolute garbage. It does not work and you don't absorb uh, the mineral or vitamin. So just like there's a, a supplement a while ago that I was looking at ZMA, zinc, magnesium, aspartate, right? So zinc is good, good for masculine stuff, good for make sure your prostate's healthy, good for testosterone production, all that kind of stuff, ZMA. It's a natural supplement. 
But the fact is, is that some companies will say ZMA and then they have a different form of zinc in the supplement in only just a mild percentage of aspartate. Zinc, magnesium, aspartate is a different structure than that cheap zinc they put in the zinc supplements out there. And if I take those supplements, I get totally sick and nauseous and it just kills me, right? So there's one company named Proline. They say, like, I actually like their stuff. Some of their stuff's okay. Uh, but they have the ZMA supplement, which is just shit because I, I took that. And it's like, it's it says ZMA, but it's not an aspartate form. It's only like 90, 80% uh, another form of zinc and then only 10% or 20 somewhere around there, that ratio of actual aspartate and uh, zinc aspartate. So as soon as I took that, I'd get like totally sick. I have to throw up and everything. It was brutal. So anyway, um, not all supplements are created equal. That's the, that's the moral of the story. So make sure you change the supplement, try something different, whatever. But if your calves are cramping, both of them, it's probably not a trigger point issue, unless of course you may have a lower back issue or something like that. But then I would think some people would say you probably get one side or the other cramping or something else. It's most likely just some sort of potassium or magnesium issue or something like that. Yeah, Nicholas. Yeah, okay. All right, Nicholas. Like, so just so you know, it's, it's really tough to tell like the difference between a troll on YouTube with a comment as opposed to somebody asking a serious question. So uh, that's why I said you're probably a nice guy. And at the same time, the question's kind of dumb. So I don't know exactly who I'm dealing with. So uh, thanks for the apology, Nicholas. And, and I will answer your question wholeheartedly. Okay. I've seen some people do, uh, you know, the unnatural substances and get away with it for periods of time. And then other people do it and have horrible side effects and bad things happen to them. And this is the reason why I decided to stay a, a natural bodybuilder my whole life, because I would see some disasters happen. So if you want my honest opinion is stay natural, screw all the superficial crap that's been thrown at you on Instagram and through this you know, kind of mental illness type industry called the fitness industry where people are basically putting plastic in themselves and, and uh, you know, saline solutions and all this shit, you know, like it, they basically totally distorted the beauty of the physique, the physique, right? Do it naturally. Find the beauty in what you have. Focus on improving in that. Don't look towards this artificial crap where Basically, it has a it has a small shelf life. You know, a lot of these guys are training for 10 years, 20 years, and some of the women or whatever, and then they're not training at all anymore because something else is happening to them. Now, I've seen some people, I mean, you could put them in a nuclear radiation camp, and it doesn't matter what you do to them, they will survive. I mean, there is something, you know, this is a, a known fact in the medical industry where there's a certain percentage of people, it doesn't matter what you do to them, they seem to survive it. So, but I wouldn't say that that is uh, the ideal circumstance for most people. Just because one person can survive a nuclear fallout doesn't mean everybody survives and or survives well. And the big thing that scared me most of my life was it's not about dying because people are like, hey, I don't care, you know, I'll die tomorrow, no problem. At least I live my life. Yeah, but that's the thing. Not everybody dies gracefully. I mean, you can die and suffer like crazy for about 30 years before you kick the bucket. I mean, that's really the thing. It's quality of life that matters. It's not about just looking great for about five or six weeks or maybe a couple of years or maybe even a decade. And then after that, having to get a kidney replacement or a liver replacement or something like that. Like, yeah. Think long-term. Don't think short-term like this, uh, this bullshit uh, that, you know, has been plagued the human race for a long time. Short-term, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work out so well. Yeah. Okay, Surya. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Surya. Yeah, Ananda. Yeah, no, I'm glad you liked uh, my other channel. Yeah. It's a channel that deals with other things, and it's uh, more about, anyway, you know what it's about. You've seen it. So it's uh, this is more the physical kind of stuff, and it's one way that people, uh, a hobby that people, and I have experience in it, so I thought, okay, I might as well make a channel where I can actually help people with that so they're not basically taking their mental illness into the physical body, which is actually what the work is that I'm doing here, is to help people enjoy it, try to build some mountains or whatever, have a good time with that, but realize it's just a hobby and you know, we're all going to be 90 and guess what? We're all going to look the fucking same then anyway. So who cares how good so many looks when they're 20 or 30, because we're all going in the same box and we're all going to look the same then. So then you're going to think, well, man, did I really need to put all my effort and all my eggs in one basket and making that body look so pretty because it's going to go sometime, right? 
I don't look the same as I did when I was 25. I'm definitely looking at the mirror and I'm like, man, I'm an ugly motherfucker someday. So <laughs> what do you do, right? This is, this is just life. But if you can find your center amongst all of it and just, just enjoy the ride, enjoy the games that you're playing, then, hey, there's nothing wrong with it. Then, then, you're, then, then your life is full and then, then you're here to have some fun experiences, but you're not getting too wrapped up in it, right? I'm swearing more today. I don't know why. Sorry, guys. I don't have that bleep thing. I can usually edit my, my swearing out, <laughs> the bleeps. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Voodoo um, used to be obsessed and in the gym six days a week. Now, now you're free and, and love your body the way it is. You know, the thing is, is that there's also, there's a healthy balance, right? You want to love your body the way it is, 100%. I'm on board with that. But you also want to be honest with yourself and say, okay, what's the healthiest thing for me to maintain this body? And some people it's cardio, some people it's yoga, some people it's weight training, some people it's a combination of all three. And, uh, and that's, that's also important because I've seen some other people, they uh, adopt the other method where basically they're, uh, they're all or nothing and they kind of go too far the other way. So they, you know, gain 700 pounds of body weight, and they're just sitting around eating, eating potato chips all day. And then, and then their body starts to rebel that way. Right. So you want to kind of walk that line, right? Yeah, CN, uh, don't worry about how much you curl, man. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're doing great. It just it just don't worry about uh, don't worry about don't worry about how much you're lifting or don't worry about comparing yourself. Like is this good? Is that good? Is, is was it better than you did last week or was it better than you did 2 years ago? That means it's good automatically, right? So Okay. What's your form for face pulls? Well, I don't really do face pulls. I know they're a trendy thing. It's funny. You see these exercises that are on the internet and they're good. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad or anything, but it's almost like they take on a, um, almost like it's Elvis. Elvis is in the building where everybody's doing that, that movement. Now I go in the gym, everybody's doing a face pull, right? They're all doing a face pull for the traps and all this. When I was training and, and, you know, I still train, I see, see it now, but when, I was training even at my heyday when I was competing and everything like that. Nobody did face pulls. Barely anybody ever did face pulls. No, nobody ever did. Like my, my version of face pulls was more like bent over dumbbell laterals where I'm externally rotating, getting traps and a lot of rear delts in there at the same time. Face pulls is pretty similar, right? Because you're externally rotating as you're bringing that, bringing that back. So, um, but yeah, my form would be just to just bring it back. And yeah, it's just like that. It's just simple. It's kind of hard for me to do. Uh, I'll draw a diagram. No, I don't have a don't have a chalkboard for it. <laughs> yeah, no, face pulls I think are great in a way because they do bring in the bicep to help a little bit because you're kind of at first you curl in and then you're you know so you can actually use the bicep to actually push the delta or the rotator cuff deeper into failure. So I think that they are still a good movement. I'm not saying they're bad or anything, but it just I just find it funny how certain movements take on almost a cult like following, right? Hmm. Thundercat, do I prefer mixing up rep ranges on the same day or separating them? I usually like to stick with, here's the way I usually do it. I go, so this is going to be my work weight, and then I'll do multiple sets with that work weight, with that rep range, and just push as many reps as I can. And then the reps, of course, will come down as fatigue sets in. That's usually what I do. I pick a certain weight, like say 225 on the bench, or 275, or whatever it is, and then I rep out many reps, and then successive sets, I start to hit failure. And then once I notice that I'm getting the, like the dead kind of body feeling in that muscle. Then I'm done. And then I move on to the next exercise. But that's usually how it works. Now, it doesn't mean that I won't change rep ranges from exercise to exercise. But usually with each exercise, I will kind of decide what feels right to me, right? Because it doesn't make sense for me to do a five rep set with an isolation movement like um, pec deck or something like that or flies, machine flies, right? So that's the other thing you have to take into account. Like some exercises just do not lend themselves to doing certain rep ranges. It's just, it just would be stupid to do certain rep ranges with certain exercises because it's just dangerous. So that's why I did, uh, I did a video on that. Isolation exercises, what rep ranges like should you use for isolations? And isolations, you definitely want to use a lighter rep range than say compounds.
Okay, uh, let me see. I'm uh, I'm not Native American. I'm Native Canadian. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I I have some Native in my roots. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Professor Cactus is asking, how long would it take me to be in contest shape? Assuming I had the discipline to stick to the diet and everything like that. Um, so from the shape I'm in now or whatever to contest shape, it would probably take me about three months, about two to three months, about that, in that area. Eight weeks to 12 weeks. I mean, sorry, 12 weeks to, well, it could be 16 too. It could be eight to 16 weeks, somewhere in there, right? It just depends on how my body starts responding to it. Uh, I haven't done really, really hardcore dieting for a long time, although I was in pretty decent shape last year and in the last couple of years. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things where once you get down to the leaner numbers, then it becomes a little bit trickier because your body sometimes starts to rebound or you don't know really how the metabolism is going to be and whether it responds as well. So until you're down there, it's, it's really impossible for me to say. But I, I would say from the feeling in my body, I would say it would take me about anywhere from eight weeks to 16 weeks. NPC, I don't even know what you're talking about, man, but uh, thanks for the two bucks, but I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. Okay, th thoughts on Branch Warren lifting technique. I would say uh, it, was, it was the right technique for him. It worked, obviously, and uh, he seemed to be fine. So the only thing that injured him seems to be uh, falling off a horse, but... <laughs> It's actually pretty good. I actually agree with it. It depends on where your insertion points are and where your tendons are inserting. And some people, if they're slow twitch fiber dominant or fast twitch fiber dominant, will train differently, right? So a person that's fast twitch fiber dominant and they're lifting heavy weights like him, it makes sense that he just wants to go on the stretch and just tear that muscle apart and then not train it for another four or five days. Like that's what is the most effective way for him to tear that muscle down. He can lift heavier weight and bounce it and get you know a few extra reps and go deeper into failure. The thing is, is that people try to make this this whole thing into a, such a magic sort of fanatical type of thinking, but really bodybuilding is nothing more than pushing the muscle to failure. And there's a number of different ways to do that. And whatever way you do it, as long as you're not getting injured, it's going to adapt. It's going to grow. Something's going to happen. So uh, there are ways to make that more efficient for each person. And some people, uh, the way to make it more efficient is to use a bit of momentum so that way they can use heavier weight and work within certain ranges with that heavier weight and stay in that range for longer and that will tear down more muscle tissue and give them more results. So yeah, some people beat up on branch Warren, but people beat up on me all the time too. And I can see how stupid some of their comments are. So honestly, uh, his, his technique was fine for him. It worked. He's, he was huge. So do I eat a lot of salad? Not lately. I haven't eaten a lot of salad lately, but I, I do like salad, but lately I've been more, more on the meat sort of kick really. Yeah, Joe Smith. Yeah, I do wish people watch more of my videos before commenting. That's why I don't do a lot of live chats because I get a lot of comments that are not necessarily relevant or even applicable. Um, so, yeah. How long did it take me to learn to train intuitively? Probably about 10 years. I would say about 10 years. It started to um, really become more of a deep thing. And then after I got a few injuries, I was faced with follow my idea or follow what my body will let me do. And when you get to this point, that's when wisdom starts. Before that, you still can kind of be a little bit deluded and say, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter where I shoot my gun. I can shoot my gun in any one direction. There's nobody around me getting shot. See, shooting the gun in every direction randomly is fine. But put yourself in the middle of a mob and then shoot your gun in every direction and then see what happens. It's, it's kind of the same thing with training, right? I mean, once you have to be accountable to what the repercussion is of your decisions with your training, then you become wiser at a exponential rate, right? So. Uh, once I dislocated the shoulder and I couldn't depend on it to stabilize the same way as before, uh, that that changed things. It even changed my squat. See, people don't even know that it changed my bed over road, changed my squat because my shoulder hangs differently on one side than the other. I have this, I'm benching kind of almost sideways sometimes. You know, so it's almost like I can have the exact same strength, but my groove is different. And at the same time, the shoulder will shift around a bit. So another thing people say, oh, why aren't you touching your chest? Well, if you bench press, right, and your shoulder stays back, like it's in the joint, like it doesn't have a torn label in the front, so it doesn't slide back and forth. 
then when you come across, you're automatically using more chest, right? But imagine your shoulder goes here and then it slides in the joint. No matter how much you pull back, it actually slides in the joint forward and back. That's going to take some of the chest out of the movement. So these things I've had to work around and also let go of any idea I had around my perfection of saying, okay, I got to be this way or that way. And of course, the internet's just more than happy to tell you about how you're you're deficient in some way or flawed, right? So I've had to overcome that too and say, oh, fuck it. Well, you know, people can think whatever they want, but the reality is my own and they don't know. Um, they don't have the awareness to understand what reality is that I'm living. So there is always going to be this war. And, and this is what I'm doing. I'm holding the light for you guys because there's going to be this war between what people think you should be doing, but what you know to be true for yourself, just because they don't understand that doesn't mean you should be listening to them, right? I mean, it's just crazy. Okay, Triggs uh, zero zero. Uh, I have pain in my left hand around the webbing from my thumb to my pointer finger. When I when I do push workouts, hurts like hell. When I do push ups, having to find out. Okay, push up. Um, you know what? One of your wrist bones might be out of place. Okay, so basically, it's like you hold on to here, and then you can actually wiggle this around and loose. And sometimes you can actually click the bone back in place, and then that will take care of any pain you're having in here. Um, sometimes this joint here wiggle this around sometimes loose and sometimes it'll actually click it in the place because there's all these little bones in here little joints right you can get them adjusted by a chiropractor too and uh, that that will help it, or it may help i mean unless of course you have a tendon issue or something like that but a lot of times uh people do just have something out of place and that's all the problem is it is my magic drink right now i have some branch chains in here and i'm going to make a video i have some lemon balm thyme and sage in here it's pretty cool so it's like uh, some herbs in the garden but i'm gonna make a video for you guys and you'll see it so this helps digestion and it also uh, helps soothe uh, the body and stuff like that and it's actually uh it tastes pretty good it almost adds a spice to your branch chains or something so the fact is is that uh, if your digestion is working great you can digest more food you can recover better and in Ayurveda, in the Eastern tradition, okay, everything starts with the digestion. If your digestion is off, then your entire body will be off, and uh, that is something important to consider. So sometimes some of these things you can find in your garden and grow really easily on your windowsill or whatever, they're, they're actually very healthy for you. So you can use those as teas and things, and it gives you something else to drink too. I haven't done any sets. I've been so busy talking. Okay. Okay, Peter Darling. Hi, Jason. What are your thoughts on the floor dumbbell fly? I think that's great. I think that the floor dumbbell fly is fine. Um, I wouldn't be straightening their arms or anything. I can keep their arms bent to where you feel like it's like me. I bend their arms a lot, right? Because again, unstable shoulders, um, bicep tear on one side, you know, but that I needed that to stabilize the shoulder. Um, you might be able to get away with straightening their arm more, but I think if you're on the floor, it's, it's, going to be safer than going down. And it's definitely going to make sure you're not going down too far. So I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Mr. Panda, um, you're saying, sorry, Galant, I just hate it when people promote PEDs without thinking about the risks. Why are you saying sorry to me? I totally agree with you, Mr. Panda. Why would you, uh, why are you saying that to me? Because I don't promote that shit at all. <laughs> Performance enhancing drugs like, totally against that right so i don't know if you're talking about somebody else here or what so you must be misunderstanding something uh ben jamin um he's so i know okay so he this is the guy promoting this okay uh you know ben the, the problem is is that you know there was a time when medical like all the medical community thought smoking was good for you so they put this substance and say, oh, I do this. It's actually healthy for you. It's good for you, all this kind of stuff. Then many years later, then the side effects came out. So the problem is, is that when you're promoting SARMs or all this fucking bullshit, basically all you're doing is taking into consideration the stuff that you could see now and the stuff that is known now. But if something's only been out for a couple of years, you obviously don't know the effect of something over a period of 30 years, do you? The study has not been conducted over a period of 20 years or 15 years or 30 years. So you cannot make an educated judgment. Now, I know you want to really um, delude yourself in a certain way and, and say it's all safe because you're wanting muscle mass the easy way so desperately 
that you don't want to do it the hard and natural way, right? Now that's your choice, whatever. But don't make the mistake of assuming that you are exonerated from any risk here. Because if, as soon as you start making decisions based on some sort of unnatural substance, there's a strong possibility that guess what? The medical community is wrong again. And they've been wrong a million times. The pharmaceutical industry has been wrong a million times. And you think they're not wrong this time. There is a possibility. You have to really entertain that thought that there's a possibility that they're wrong. So why can't you do it the, the normal way? Why can't you do it the natural way? Why won't you do it? You know, I'd really sit down with that and find out. That, that's what I would do. But if you're tuning in this channel, maybe you're interested in that. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just want to just say, hey, I want to get muscle. I don't give a shit what I have to do to get it. I don't care. Well, then just do whatever. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I think it's stupid, but you don't have to live your life based on my opinion. <laughs> that's why it's a free world. Okay. Tribulus trestus, that's fine. Uh, I don't use tribulus trestus, but uh, it's a natural substance. It's a, it's fine. It just helps your body's own production of something, which is different than actually putting something into it. It's different. Uh, H. Laker, we cannot help the mind-muscle connection. I'm going to tell you this right now, and I know you hate it when I say this because I know you're heavily invested in that drug. I know you love it, and I know there's a whole culture around it. Everybody loves that shit or whatever, but we does not. I have trained with guys that used to just love doing that stuff. And as soon as they put muscle mass on, I'm telling you, muscle tears all over the place because they're numb. Why would weed or marijuana be used as a painkiller? Why? Because it disconnects you from sensation. Painkiller does not help you with connection. Connection is connection to what? Sensation, which would be pain. Now, if you have something that is a painkiller, it disconnects you from all sensation. It doesn't say, oh, I'm just going to disconnect you from the pain, but you're going to know all the good pains and the bad pains, and you're going to know exactly what's going on with the muscles at any one moment. No, you're not. You're not. You're basically deluding yourself. So you can do it, but I'm telling you, uh, it's it's not it's not the path long term. And I've talked to my brother about this too. In Chinese medicine, uh, it is you know he said this. I'm not the expert in this area. He said it actually um, affects the spleen channel. Now the spleen channel is responsible for ligament and tendon healing. So uh, you can go with that. Yeah, Surya Ananda, you know, one thing you have to understand, Surya, is that everything I'm talking to, I'm talking to a different crowd, different audience with a different intention and different things. So, uh, again, the med <laughs> here's another thing, okay? The spiritual community has just as much BS going on as the bodybuilding or fitness community. Um, they have a cultural uh, bias that says your personality should be a certain way. You should speak softly. You should squint your eyes. You should be nothing but soft and polite and everything. And, and be a vegetarian and all this kind of stuff. That's all BS too. This is that's all a role that people are playing, which is just as much a prison as a person who is doing those supposedly bad things. So the bottom line is is that freedom is within. It has nothing to do with the personality, it has nothing to do with words or if somebody swears or if they don't swear or if somebody talks harshly or if their personality is not quite in alignment with what you like or dislike. It has to do with the emanation of who you truly are. That's it. So, yeah, Surya, I'm not constrained by your opinion either. So just so you know, that's the thing. Freedom is unconditional. It has nothing to do with being constrained by other people's egos. You know, Surya, I'm also I'm going to talk about this a little bit, okay? Because I, I think it's a very interesting subject because – so many people use spiritual teachings and, and, and there's a mix of culture and stuff in there. And there's a mix of religion, which is like, that's another whole ball of wax. Okay. And they mix everything into something that's supposed to lead them to freedom and they use it to find another prison. So all they do is they, you know, they have a prison cell. They're in the middle of a maximum security prison. And all they do is put nice paint on the walls. And then they say, look at me, I'm free, <laughs> but they're not. So freedom has to do 
with an experience within. It has nothing to do with what way the truth moves. And sometimes guru, guru is the speller of darkness. Sometimes guru works into the, the darkness, right? You dispel darkness, you dispel ignorance, and you work with that. You speak the language of that darkness at that time in order to dispel it and to bring a deeper level of light. You need to elevate wherever you can on whatever level it's at. And that happens in fitness as well, right? You can't just teach somebody the most advanced bodybuilding technique when they haven't even been in the gym the first time. So you have to work with that. But yeah, all I teach is honesty. That's all I teach. Truth and honesty. That's it. I don't teach anything else really. And any type of self-reflection, any type of self-awareness, any type of training, just being honest with yourself about what's working in the gym, what's working here, that is going to lead you to a wiser, happier life. It's, 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 it's about living outside the delusion that is the mind that says, this is what things should be instead of what they actually are and dealing with that. That's where you have to start no matter what you're in, no matter what society you're in. You have to start with where are you at? What is happening before you? And then from there, elevate, right? Okay, uh, Kane Waddington, any advice would you tell your younger self? The advice I tell my younger self is don't trust a chiropractor that tells you not to <laughs> that tells you to lock your arm out during a strength test. I would tell them don't trust chiropractors just because they have a doctorate. Uh, some of them are very good. Some of them are very bad. That's all I can say. And uh, don't trust any sort of health or medical professional that tells you something when your intuition is telling you something different. That's, that's the first thing I tell my younger self because I respected education way too much when I was 20 years old. I thought, oh, because they're smarter than me, they went to university or whatever, they did something, they must know something I don't. And meanwhile, a lot of times they just knew a bunch of crap and, and a couple of good things, but then a bunch of crap that wasn't true and they were trying to basically push that upon you, right? So that's how I ended up injuring my bicep was that chiropractor doing the wrong technique on me and insisting me not to listen to my own advice. Uh, so that's, that's the one thing. The other thing is um, I would obviously teach myself the proper technique when it comes down to deadlifting and, and that sort of thing. And the other thing I would say is, Jason, do not start playing hockey unless you're willing to deal with the reality of a dislocation shoulder or a uh, MCL tear or something like that because it's going to happen. I would say that because hockey is so much fun. Don't get me wrong. I loved it, but that injury totally changed my life. And it was all for the better in a way. It led me to a different level in my life. It forced me to let go of the ego around all physiques and, and, and bodybuilding identification. But at the same time, it was one of those things where eh, I, I could have avoided it by just uh, staying away from high velocity sports that are highly unstable at the same time. I mean, velocity and instability and momentum, my God, that's like a pretty good uh, combination for injury, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, you know, Drew, there's a lot of reasons why I'm not going to comment on Marcus, okay? So you're just going to have to take your own meaning on that, and that's it. So I'm not going to say anything. I did a lot of photo shoots with different people, and uh, yeah, there's there's different I, – I like I said, I competed in the WMBF as a pro and uh, polygraph tested, urine tested, everything like that, and then there's a lot of people that, that trained differently and did different things, but uh, I think you can – Anyway, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, Drew? Yeah. Any tips to work out after shoulder anterior subluxation? Well, uh, how soon after the subluxation? Because uh, I did that to myself about 10 times <laughs> uh, in hockey, of course. So I just popped my shoulder out. Uh, I just would train through it. Sometimes I go right to the gym and just train because it just didn't really make a difference. It just would hurt, and then it popped in, and then it would be sore, and then I could still train through it. Um, but if you just do it the first time, then you're not supposed to train at all. You're supposed to just stay, you know, without moving the shoulder for at least six weeks. So that way the shoulder can maybe heal, right? Because sometimes uh, the torn labrum will heal up on its own if it's not too extreme. Uh, most often, though, it doesn't heal and then you need to get surgery or you just live with it. You just find a way to live with it and it kind of stabilizes on its own as long as you're not doing high velocity sports and, and you know, winging it out of joint all the time, right? That's the thing. You want, you want to stabilize it for as long as possible. The longer it's stable, then the longer or the more stable it will be. That's the thing. <clears throat> okay, I noticed there are a lot more spiritual people in bodybuilding compared to other sports. Any thoughts on why? Huh, I don't know if that's true. I don't I don't know if it's true or not. Um 
maybe it's, it's something you're noticing, but I think if there, if it is true, it would probably be because a lot of times bodybuilders are made out of retirement from other sports. A lot of bodybuilders become bodybuilders because they, they had to face some sort of existential sort of issue when it comes down to why they couldn't pursue football or something. Right. And then they became bodybuilders. There's a lot of, a lot of big bodybuilders were ex football players. And, um, and I think also you, you face pain constantly and you're always with yourself facing pain, facing pain, facing pain. That's really the spiritual path is when you become a master of pain physically, emotionally, mentally. And then you realize that there's something that is there amidst all of it, watching that entire story of pain. And then there's a shift in your reality of existence. So that is probably why uh, you go through that because a lot of religions or spiritual um, paths, let me just turn this down here. There's a lot of um, spiritual paths that are, are much like bodybuilding. They, they go through different types of fasts or they, they deny themselves urges like desires of certain types. That is actually a spiritual path. It's discipline. You're building the discipline. Spirituality and discipline are pretty much the same thing. They're, they're, you're disciplining the mind. You're reining it in so that way you can, you're not following just this random unconscious sort of movement of energy so that you can realize a stable point amidst all of that. So anyway, that, that's probably why bodybuilding is got a lot of people like that in there have i ever had my testosterone level checked here so mine uh, might be higher than the average person you know at one point in my life maybe it was i don't know but i don't think it is now i'll tell you that <laughs> you know, I, I, i'm pretty sure it probably isn't yeah cynthia vasquez okay this must be some guy using his girlfriend's account or something Am I going to do Natty Ver? I don't even know what Natty Verified is. And am I, I'm not a fake Natty. I, I basically, I already did all the drug testing back in the day at my peak. Like, I don't know why, I don't need to prove anything to anybody anymore. So no, I'm not a fake Natty, my friend. Any thoughts on TRT? Well, TRT is, is not natural. So you should already know my thoughts on it. If you watched any of my stuff, I would say, no, why would you do it? Why? You don't do TRT. So if I don't do it, then what makes you think that I believe in it? I don't believe in any sort of testosterone therapy, any drugs or anything. I don't believe in that stuff. Um, at 46 years old, should you train differently for gains? I would say stick to uh, moderately higher reps and, and be more conscious of injury and stuff because when you're a bit older, there is a little bit more stiffness in the muscle, you're a little bit more brittle, okay, around tendons and ligaments and things. And if you push too hard, you can pull something. Uh, if you know, because you got to remember, you've spent a lot of your life probably in one position or probably in a certain set point. So I don't know if you have training past or not, but if you don't have a training past, if you haven't really trained and you're starting this all uh, uh, for the first time, pretty much in the last 20 years or whatever, then you have to make sure you get the cobwebs out of the body and get it used to moving. Just getting it moving is important, but not overstretching the crap out of it. Overstretching the crap out of it or yanking the joints in different directions and stuff is going to cause more commotion. You're going to have to be more impeccable, let's just say, to to better technique than you would be if you're 20 years old and you could pretty much break an arm every day and then recover from it then the next week, right? So that, that's one thing I would say. And, you know, as far as like uh, rep speed, maybe have a slower rep speed at first just to get used to movements first before you start you know, increasing the speed. Surya, can you lose, can I lose my gut, but still keep my size? Well, it depends if your size is body fat, then you can't, <laughs> right? A lot of times people think they're big, but they have a lot of body fat, right? So um, this, that it just depends what, what the size is made up of, right? So, Yes, you can lose your gut and maintain a lot of your size if it's muscle, but you have to diet smart and only lose about a pound a week, not be losing like 10 pounds or five pounds in a week and, and crash dieting. That'll cause your body to eat the muscle up real fast, yeah, much faster than the body fat, right? Um, David just said, I, I just, I don't do agility work. I just lift mostly, yeah. Joe Smith, thoughts on isolation set till failure followed by compound till failure. Yeah, um, that's that's good. That's a good technique. Um, it's called the pre-exhaust method. 
and watch my video on uh, isolations first. It's called Isolations First, Joe Smith. Uh, watch that. Okay, Travis, more day in the life vids equals new patron subscriber. You know, that's funny you say that because some people like they like some of the day in the life stuff or sometimes they like certain things, but it's really tough to get a beat on what people really want to see because a lot of times it seems like most people just want information, right? So I've been doing more information and kind of quick vids. And I mean, trying to use like B-roll footage and stuff so you see other things that are going on, whether I'm driving my truck in the woods or whatever, try to make it interesting that way. But yeah, anytime you guys have feedback on what you want to see, or what you're really interested in or what you really like about a video, make sure you leave that in a comment down below because I do pay attention to that stuff and then I do put more of that in the next videos for sure. Uh, TNL card uh, on intermittent, every single freaking live chat, somebody asked me on intermittent investing and I, I don't I don't think it's really great, but I mean, it may be short term, maybe good, but I never used it. If I would have used intermittent fasting in my day, I would have looked like crap. Uh, David, you said how often should you try and reach your max during bench press? I would say never. You should probably never do one rep maxes. I would say never, never one rep maxes. You don't need to. Like one day, like if you're doing five reps, okay, say you're doing five reps for heavyweight, and then, you know, you're doing five reps at sets of 185, and then one day you're doing five reps at 195, and then one day you're doing five reps at 225. Guess what? The 225 might have been your one rep max before, but now you're doing five reps with it, but now you're safer. The one rep max is not necessary in order for you to gain strength. That's the big fallacy. And I've seen a lot of people make that mistake. And a lot of guys that came to my house that were teenagers actually injured themselves trying to do that. Every workout, they were doing one rep maxes or every couple workouts to see if they're – like once a week, they do a one rep max. And then they were doing four rep sets, five rep sets. Every one of those guys, and I'm not kidding, every one of them ended up with a messed up shoulder after about two or three months of training like that. And they were only 15, 16 years old. So – you know, just, just based on that, if, if something breaks you, it cannot be the truth when it comes to your training. If it breaks you, it cannot be the truth. Remember that. And it doesn't matter whether this guy over here did it and didn't break. No, it's a matter of, does it break you? That's, that's the thing. So I've seen it over and over again. One rep maxes, they just break people. And if you've got like crazy joints, like some of these guys, like Thor, you know, Bernson or whatever his name is, you know, like these guys, like, I mean, they're also... You know, there are other factors involved in these guys too. But the fact is, is that some people naturally have thicker ligaments and strings and, and they can sometimes have a greater toleration for that. But I wouldn't say that their physiques are the best. They're not, they're not really bodybuilding. So again, you have to ask yourself why you're training, right? But one rep max is in, in the long run will just beat your joints to pieces. So that way one day you won't be able to do agility work or anything. You're just going to basically uh, be pretty much crippled. So yeah, even if it worked better for a period of five or 10 years, most likely you won't be walking very well or you'll be doing the Ronnie Coleman later on in life and getting surgeries and stuff. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a delicate thing. The body's more delicate than people think. It, it does recover, but you don't want to challenge the joints so much that it's overkill because the joints are already getting challenged. So you don't want to beat them to crap. So yeah, I would say... Doing heavyweight is good, but you don't need to do it as much, and you don't need to do it as extreme. That's all. Yeah, Andrew, yeah, Cynthia's an idiot. So I'm just going to – Cynthia, you know, and I'm going to say this in the highest, highest spiritual way. Um, go fuck yourself. And that's uh, that's your that's your spiritual teaching for the day. Okay, <laughs> Joe Smith. Hey, I'm just on twelve and I squat five eighty five for fifty reps. Is this good? <laughs> exactly. I'd say Joe. That's that's pretty darn good, Joe. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Five eighty five for sixty seven thousand reps. That's good. Yeah, I'm pretty impressive. That's. I would say you're an alien at that point. <laughs> Okay, Muscle Addict uh, 103, uh, what range do I like for side lateral raises uh, the most? Uh, 50 to 100 rep set. You know what? I would say that you're not necessarily wrong in that, Muscle Addict, although I'm not necessarily a proponent of 50 to 100. I find with isolations, again, it's different because here's the thing. When you do heavy weights with an isolation and you hang the, the joint a certain way and then you do heavier weight, it changes what muscles come into play to actually uh, stabilize. So sometimes, like say you're doing laterals like this, and you're using certain muscles to go up and down for 50 reps. When you use heavier weights, then sometimes you recruit other muscles to do the same thing. So you start to actually have 
it, although it's the same exercise, it almost becomes a different exercise because there's different stimulus or different stimulation going on. So it is good to mess around with that. And, and at the same time, too, with lateral raises, because you're working the supraspinatus and the delt and stuff, and it's really dangerous for me to do heavyweight like this, I, I always stick to any at least 20 reps, at least at least 20 reps for the set, if not higher than that. So, um, yeah, lateral raises, I think 20 reps and higher is, is the best possible thing. So 50 to 100 reps, you get some wicked pumps from that. It hurts like hell, though. Holy shit, like that burns. Like sometimes it takes a little bit of willpower to do that. So, so good for you. Uh, Ryan O, my take on stomach vacuums. Uh, I don't I don't ever do them. I never did. I never really got into that stuff. Max Power. Um, are you saying I'm a loser there, Max? Am I a loser? Or are you saying Cynthia's a loser? Uh, do I use creatine for protein shakes and do they even work? Creatine does work. I, I, I don't think it's great to mix them with protein shakes just because it may maybe not absorb as well. I mean, not that I haven't done it before in my past, but creatine does work. It just makes me retain water. So sometimes I can't tell whether my diet, whether I'm getting leaner or fatter sometimes because I retain water. So that's the reason why I don't use creatine a lot, a lot, but it does work. It is actually effective. Okay, so Randy Boudreau, I didn't see what your uh, question was above there. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through here, guys. So sorry if I missed your uh, thing. Uh, Yarlo or Jarlo, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, sorry, buddy. Um, is veganism good for bodybuilding? You know what? There have been stories of vegan bodybuilders and all this kind of stuff, but I think it depends on your blood type, depends on your constitution, depends on a lot of things. And a lot of people are really heavily invested into uh, belief systems, once again, instead of what's working. And, and each person has a different constitution. So I would say... For myself, veganism is definitely not good for bodybuilding, but for somebody else, maybe it is. Maybe it's okay. <laughs> Max Baron, you were a winner, Mountain. Okay. I'm a I'm not a loser. Okay. All right, that's good. Man eating pizza. This porno is awesome, dog. Yeah, thanks, man. You're welcome. I happy to happy to help you out. <laughs> Ryan, oh, what about keto? Uh, you are not a fan, right? No, I, I don't believe it. Like, I think sometimes, you know, a resetting the system, resetting the system through doing a certain exercise or, or a certain diet or whatever. Like, I, I'm all about trying something new. And and I, I think that maybe there's something to be said because I know 100% when guys, like, really deplete themselves for bodybuilding shows or contests and they go into really low-carb diets and stuff like that, and sometimes they seem to make more gains over the long run because then their body rebounds after. So maybe their body has a greater tolerance for sugar and carbs and things, and your body absorbs better and uses those nutrients better. So short-term, maybe maybe keto would be okay. I just talked to a lady about it today at the store. Um, but long-term, I think it's going to be a little rough on the system as far as what I've heard about it. And I can't imagine, like I know myself, if I go with no carbs at all, because carbs are protein sparing and also carbs do contribute to sometimes uh, like ligament healing and that sort of thing. So because glucosamine, glucose and amino acid, right? You combine them together and you get the sticky stuff that helps lubricate joints and stuff. So going zero carbs are really, really low, like too low over too long a period of time. I, I think it can have a detrimental effect on protein sparing or keeping your body anabolic, right? So, uh, but short term, maybe to reset the blood sugar and maybe to help with some fat loss or something like that. If you're an extreme, you know, weight, maybe, maybe it could help. I don't know. It, it's worth a try for short term, but I just don't think long term it would be good. Hey, MMA Renegade, how's it going, brother? Uh, hey, Surya Ananda, yeah, you got to go soon, 3 a.m. here in the UK. Thanks for stopping by there, Surya. And sorry, you have to see the, the rough side of my teaching, but uh, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> like I said, I, I'm always, it, it's always depending on what's in front of me, it will depend on what I say. So <laughs> depends on what's needed, right? So uh, it was great having you here, though, Surya. So you, you, blessings to you and, and uh, happy Japa and all that. <laughs> is it okay to train biceps and triceps in the same day sorry yes it is too uh, yeah so yeah go ahead man there's nothing wrong with that yeah 
Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to go through these comments, guys. So sorry if I'm forgetting anybody or if I'm missing you. It's not because I'm ignoring you on purpose. It's just because I have to scroll down and I'm trying not to lose your guys' attention too much by, by my eyes going off to the side of the screen. So I don't have an assistant. Andrew, where are you, man? I mean, not only have I not got the video from you since you got married, so congratulations on that, but I haven't got a video from you, no comedy video, nothing, and you're not doing the virtual assistant right here. You could be reading the comments for me and telling me, and I could be looking at the camera, looking all pretty and all that, uh, but you're not even helping me there. So way to go, Andrew. And then, of course, you live somewhere totally in a different country or whatever, so way to go on that one. Big time fail. Okay, Mario's saying something here. Uh, Mario, it's it's not that. Okay, why did I ban Cynthia for asking if I do the Manati verified? It's because it's because of what they're. It's it's a whole basis of basically I have to prove something when I've already proven it. Like I've already taken fifteen drug tests. Like why would I need to take another drug test? Like it, it doesn't make sense. But it's all because people want you to be under their. Um, they want you to be under their scalpel and constantly measure you and, and find some way to look at you in a negative way when I've already proven that I'm natural. So when somebody's speaking from a place of doubt and constant criticism and everything, it's like the relationship's already starting from a shit standpoint. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just don't feel like dealing with it. And I mean, there's some other negative stuff I think that she was saying too, or he or whatever. And I just, I just don't feel like spending my time doing it. I'm doing this for free right now. Like I'm not getting paid. So I don't have to deal with the abuse. Right. Yeah, there's birds in the background. I have my garage door open. Yeah, Mario, it wouldn't necessarily get me more viewers. That's the thing. I, I'm not interested in promoting other people's channels either. So people are like, hey, do you know this person? Talk, check them out. I'm like, I don't care about them. I mean, I'm just I'm about friendship and everything. But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not interested in buying into the trends with people doing certain things. When I've been around this, like the pyramids, man, I've been around doing this for so long that I don't need to get um, – approval from some little channel over here or there in order to, to, to get their approval. You know, I'm, I'm just not, I'm just not interested in playing that game. Right. It's just, it's like a form of enslavement really. Do you know that? Like when you're, you're trying to basically win somebody's affection constantly, it's, it's, uh, if you're sitting in my shoes, you wouldn't really be that interested. It's, it's just going through the effort. Like, like for instance, some people, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to go into it. Uh, the, the bottom line is that I just, I'm just not interested in playing the game. So, uh, walking, uh, rug area, working in the oil fields 14 days on site with no access to the gym 14 days off. How would you program a routine? Yeah, interesting. I would train a lot of whole body workouts for the 14 days that I'm on, um, on training. And then when I'm off training, then I would be needing that for recovery. But I would be doing whole body workouts every single day, maybe a day off here and there. And I would be doing high reps one day, medium reps another day, heavy the next day, and then go through that over and over again. And I would do a lot of whole body lifts and stuff. So basically my 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 thing would be is to overtrain on purpose, whatever that would mean, and then I'd be undertrained during the two weeks. So it'd be constantly overcompensating, undercompensating. And you, here's the thing: you want to do it so that you don't injure yourself, though, right? So you don't want to push too hard. So that's that's what I would be doing. I mean, you'd have to take a couple of days off for sure on the 14 days of training. You'd have to take one or two days off, but I would definitely make sure that I'm very consistent during that period of time. And then I would find something to do when I'm in the oil fields in between like when i'm doing jobs like say push-ups or dips or something in between like you know when you're having a coffee break or something like just little things just to constantly keep the blood going um but that that's yeah that's generally how i do it something like that okay I just got to put a couple people on time out here. All right. Some, sorry, guys. Some spammers on here and stuff. So, yeah, I just got rid of them. 
are box squats a good explosive workout? Um, yeah, squats, box squats are fine. Um, Romanian deadlifts are great. If you want to be explosive, deadlifting is actually really great, especially a Romanian deadlift. Because when you're going to jump, you don't have to go right from the floor. And, and again, squatting, you don't have to squat ass to the grass. And you don't even have to maybe do parallel. Because if you jump, if you notice, your knees are at about 90 degrees when you jump. So you're not necessarily going to get more explosiveness from squatting deeper, as much as some people might say this. And there have been some studies that support this. And I've done my own study on it as far as my own personal sort of uh, thing. And I noticed that my hockey skills, I was a lot faster when I was doing 90 degree squats as opposed to really deep squats for a period of time. So yeah, it's going to be mostly hamstring work or hip work. That's what's going to lead to explosiveness. Okay, powerful mind 718. Hey, Jason, what are the best exercises I can do for shoulders without overhead pressing? I would say bent over rear uh, rear delts, bent over lateral raise like this with external rotation. That's one of the best movements ever. I love that movement. Uh, lateral raises, of course. And, uh, you know, you could do the face pulls like somebody talked about before. And bent over laterals. And also rotator cuff, of course. Like uh, when laying on your side and you're externally rotating. And, and, and then have your arm on a preacher and externally rotate. These types of exercises are great. Hip thrusts, love them or hate them. I never do them. I just uh, never needed to. Um, I find that one legged squats on the spin machine, you do get a lot of butt involvement anyway. Uh, I'm, again, a hip thrust, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means that I just found it just so awkward to get into the movement, and I just never really found it uh, uh, enticing, I guess. <laughs> enticing for me to do so. It doesn't mean, you know, sometimes I. Sometimes it's about personal preference. It's about sometimes comfort. It's about what you want to work. And I like to get the most bang for my buck. And sometimes some of these isolations and things, I'm not really enjoying them. So if you're not enjoying the workout, then why, why are you doing it? Um, so I, I like to do stuff that is more in, in alignment with what I'm interested in. Trauma, did I ever power lift? I kind of train like a powerlifter, except for the range of motion side of things. I didn't, you know, powerlifters would be watching this and just totally like, <laughs> you know, cringing, right? If I say that, but I did train to basically get stronger with the bench and the squat, especially, right? And uh, and I deadlifted wrong when I first started and herniated a disc when I was 19 years old and all that. And um, so I was, I wanted to. I think like bodybuilding and powerlifting were pretty much the same thing to me. You know, I was trying to get stronger and gain muscle. It was all the same thing because it is closely related although powerlifting is being a specialist in three different lifts and i knew at an early age that i could not squat parallel and and have my body feel right about it it, it just was not right based on the way my back and my hips and everything move it just didn't feel right so yeah i didn't get into powerlifting and the other thing i didn't like about powerlifting was that if you go into competition and that day you feel a little bit off or something's tweaked or something like that and then you go in there and you injure yourself because one rep max is where you injure yourself it just seemed like a recipe for disaster to get more injuries so i thought yeah because i tried lifting heavy all the time that's how i discovered that you get injured from heavy lifting it's because i lifted heavy all the time when i first started i was like oh it's all oh, you got to do heavy heavy and then of course i get injured and i'm like what the hell you know why, why can't i do this and i would be in this constant debate with myself of how i should be able to do it but i couldn't and then of course certain realities became apparent to me and then i i learned how to you know do what i do now and then basically help people with their gains too hey dirty hog redneck you can uh, you can actually uh, look at all my other videos if you want to see my physique and all that so go ahead is static stretching bad before a workout? I would say static stretching, if it's if it's not aggressive, it wouldn't be bad before a workout. Although some people say when you're stretched out too much and too loose and all this kind of stuff, you are uh, going to be a little bit uh, less involved in the static reflex of the muscle as far as you're not going to get as much strength. So I know once you deal with elite levels of strength training and all that, then, then they have their own sort of systems and things. But I found that light stretching was always effective in keeping – um, the injuries away. So I, I don't think light stretching is, is a problem. You just want to make sure that you warm up the muscle a little bit with some light weights and then you stretch, not just stretch right away. Right. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody saying that, uh, you know, there's a guy that lifts heavy all the time. I'm just a puss. Well, that guy's not natural. Right. So you can't compare a natural bodybuilder or somebody that's drug free to somebody that's not natural. And, and basically, 
they're an entire hormone camp and doing a bunch of stuff because that, that totally changes the rules. Right. So, um, but we'll see who's still sitting here another 40 years from now. <laughs> so, you know, it's a life's not a race, man. In the end, it's the turtle that wins. It's not always, it's not always the big explosive fireworks that <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's so hard talking to youth sometimes. The, the, the ignorance of youth. I mean, there's some pretty smart people when they're young, but man, when you haven't seen enough seasons, it's very easy for you to understand that, oh, I've been in fall my whole time. There's no such thing as winter. Guess what? There's some people that are going to see a real harsh winter. Winter is coming. Game of Thrones? Yeah. Okay. Winter is coming. And when winter comes for some of these people, it's going to be quite disastrous and quite explosive. So I'm not praying for that for them, but it's it's not health is a very delicate thing and some people are playing with fire. So you can call me a wuss all you want. That's fine. Uh, but that's your opinion. And I'm not dominated by that. I don't give a shit. And you can go fuck yourself too. <laughs> so welcome to YouTube. And I'm talking to somebody specific that actually messaged me there, guys. So don't take it the wrong way. I'm not talking to you who are making nice comments. So <laughs> like I said, that's like, some of the rude comments I get. It's just, it's, it's absolutely, totally, uh, it's, it's surprising sometimes, but. All right. Okay. Let me just read through some of this stuff here. Donald Creech is saying he has a grinding sound in his shoulders when he does overhead movements. There's no pain, but I'm afraid that I to do overhead press for fear of injury. Uh, you know, get some massage therapy on there or see a naturopath or some acupuncture or whatever and see if the muscles are not stabilizing properly. That might be part of it. You might also have a pre-existing injury, like maybe you tore a labrum before in a car accident or doing something, or you, maybe there's a partial tear. Just because there's a grinding noise doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get an injury from doing that movement. I have lots of noises going on, so uh, so don't don't be too afraid. Just 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 be careful and listen to the feeling in your body. If you're feeling pain and stuff like that, pay attention to that, and don't go too aggressive with the weight. But to, you can still push yourself, go deep into the burn and stuff, and 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 learn how to do the proper technique, right? Do I have an opinion on neck bridges? Uh, I, you know, I, I know they're ne useful for wrestling and stuff like that, but uh, for me doing neck bridges, I, I think it would probably just tweak my neck. <laughs> so I, I don't do them, but, but I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say that I have like a wrestler's neck. Right. But if you're going to be doing wrestling or football or scrum and rugby and stuff like that, then it's, it's a necessity for you to really strengthen up those neck extensors and, and the side muscles and stuff and scalings uh, because your, your neck's getting pulled and tweaked all over the place. So, yeah, I would say in that case, you definitely should be doing something like that. I think that would be good. Yeah. David said when he bench, I bring the bar down to my chest. I hear cracking noises every time I do a rep. Any thoughts? Oh, where are you getting the cracking noises? In your rib or in your shoulder? I never use kettlebells. Uh, horror biz. Yeah. Lester, I don't know what language you're speaking. You're too old to take care of your wife. I don't even understand the context of that or who you're talking to. Frank Frankerson, I'm 40, 25 year natty. Stay smart, watch your joints. No need for the tips or tricks or enhancements. You're going to max out anyway. Get pretty damn big all by yourself. Yeah, it's true, Frank. Yeah, true, true that man. You can you can get big and you can actually get results and you don't have to crucify yourself. It's it's good. It takes time. That's all. And Francis Dyke, do I do direct serratus work? Uh, not necessarily, no. I mean, I, I've done planks and things, and and uh, and I've foam, foam rolled, and I've I've done like <laughs> I have spent so much time on top of a massage ball, like getting different trigger points out and behind the lats and behind the shoulder blades and stuff like that. So I've done all that. Like none of that stuff is really relevant for me. Uh, I've tried it; it doesn't work. I mean, it's not going to do anything different to the shoulder. Like I don't have a stability issue with the shoulder. That's that's what my point is. It's actually like I've done an MRI. It's there's two torn off parts to the labor room the, the doctor didn't even believe that I still trained with my, my joint like that. So, uh, 
Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's not something that could just be fixed just by doing a couple of little exercises in the gym. Like it's so funny. There was this one person that just started, they just got their personal training certification. So they were like, Hey, should we try foam rolling for that torn labrum? <laughs> like, I'm like, man, I just wish you, you, you can't fix a broken arm with a couple wrist curls, right? It's, it's not like that. It's like when the structure is actually broken, uh, you know, the exercises you can, they might help a little bit, but I'm already doing all the exercises and all the massage and stuff, but yeah, you won't change the structure, right? Yeah, no problem, Lester. I just didn't know what you meant. Uh, why are you saying I can't take care of my wife? I don't, I don't get the joke, so. Yeah, I don't know. We get some guys with Tourette's on this channel for some reason. I don't know why. It's, it seems like YouTube is like the, the comment section for Tourette's people. I have no idea why. People like, they just come in and just like, Rah! just random stuff and not saying anything that has to do with a conversation. Like, I'm a real person. This is a real person in front of you. You can talk to a real person right now. We're not we're not just like yelling. I remember when I was in elementary school, there was always that troubled kid in the class. And my poor kid, you know, maybe he was having trouble at home or whatever, but there was always that one kid that got thrown in the corner because he just would not shut up. Like for <laughs> the whole class, I would have to go sit in the corner until he learned to quiet down and listen to the teacher. So I almost need a little timeout chair for some of you guys or some hats or something. Uh, Zorak, if your chest when flexing is more X shaped than round, is it genetic? Yeah, it's mostly genetic. But I mean, the thing is, is that if you are more filled out, then then your chest will have more of a balloony type look. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite common for people on the internet though to have a inflated sort of expectation of what the chest should look like because they see all these guys that are not natural and they're totally inflated with blood and pumped all the time. And so yeah, don't worry too much about that. Just just keep training. Do I train my forms? Godfather, I actually made a video on this. On body parts, I don't train, but yeah, these 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 puppies, these puppies just seem to. I don't know. I just I don't need to train them. They just get they just get worked, right? Okay, here we go. I'm just going down here. You know what's funny? <laughs> there's there's some guys that are on the internet, and there was a guy live streaming today, and uh, and I was trying, I was actually one of the commenters. I was actually trying to comment and stuff. And I could see some of this experience because I could see how he was like having this experience of seeing this, the crazy people, you know, like he was like, I would comment and like, Hey man, you look like a Smurf in that, that sweater out there. Cause he was wearing this sweater over his head. And I could tell how he just right away was not liking me because he was assuming that I had negative intentions because there's just so much trolling on live streams. Right. I was like, yeah, it's really tough to have a real conversation with people because there's this, this barrier between you and the person because they're, they're, interacting with you like you're a robot or some sort of tv show that there's no real relationship so um yeah it was an interesting experience for me anyway to be a commenter and be misinterpreted by the person doing the live stream so <laughs> uh, oh, we always get the religious cycle in here too that's great yeah we get the religious cycles too that's funny where they say you have to be saved you have to be saved by there's always one of those too it's funny isn't it yeah it's not it's not full moon is it i think we just had a full moon hey digweed how you doing buddy yeah no i i like having you here too there digweed 88 you're a great guy man it's great having you here yeah there's a few hardcore guys and hardcore women that are just awesome people to have on this channel and they've been a lifesaver as far as me continuing to make these videos because if they weren't here like what the hell's the point i mean i'm not going to make videos for people that just hate me all the time like what's the point right so um Okay, Surya Nanda, you're still here. Okay, what are my views on CrossFit? Okay, so you haven't seen my old videos on this channel, but if you look, you'll see that I don't have any positive, don't have much positive things to say about CrossFit. Um, and, and I'll never do a live stream on the spiritual channel because I get too many crazy religious people that are looking to perpetuate their illusions and argue with me. And I just don't want to deal with the negativity on YouTube with that. If somebody wants to work with me on my meditation channel, if they want to work with me, they can pay for a session and, and see me. And, and then they're, they've actually gone through the gateway to say, okay, I wish to have a conversation with you. But if you let it just be a free for all, all you do is just get abused by people that are just there to just throw their opinions at you. And they have no interest in actual spiritual development because they're not willing to trade their own opinion just for a moment. So that's why I don't do live streams on the spiritual channel. 
and you wouldn't believe how many people get on that channel and say that all oh, mantras are they're all demons and, and this and that and any anybody that's a part of any religion that's not theirs is is the worst right they're just like they're, they're demonic they're evil and all this and there's only this way in order for salvation it all this is just bull crap right uh it's just it's just like saying hey there's only one way to bench press you know like you can only bench press straight up if you bench press towards your eyes you are going to hell right it's kind of like that right <laughs> and funny enough there is that in the body community too so but yeah so um as far as uh let me see you so you're talking about crossfit well crossfit i don't like crossfit because first of all it's full body movements which i like but full body movements that don't necessarily apply to anybody second of all you have to move in a certain way, which again goes in, in line with my first statement is that it's it, something's doing ass to the grass squats with weight above your head is not conducive for certain body types. And second of all, there's this trend that I've seen in a lot of CrossFit circles. I'm not saying all of them, but I mean, I'm sure there's some smart coaches out there too. So I'm not you know, peeing on them. I mean, some of them are probably pretty good, but if you're lifting over the head, and you're going in with heavier weight and then you're hitting absolute failure and then you're doing circuit training and you're doing circuit training and wearing out the stabilizer muscles in the spine by running and then lifting with those you're risking massive injury because those muscles that stabilize the spine once they hit fatigue guess what happens the spine takes the stress so there have been multiple times you see injuries where people just blown out their forearms because they're they're also taught to strain so deep into failure and, and, and pull or push at, at any any cost and not pay attention to the body and use high balance, like, like too many things can go wrong. Whenever you add weight, momentum, and absolute failure, you've got a recipe for disaster. And that's why you see people dropping bars. Like one person got crippled, they lifted over the head and then they dropped the bar on their spine. So CrossFit, I, I don't agree with uh, a lot of CrossFit, uh, a lot of the CrossFit techniques that are in a lot of memes out there. I mean, there's a reason why you see a lot of <laughs> accidents, right? Now, do I think that there can be a smart way to apply CrossFit principles? Yes. I mean, but the CrossFit part is not the part I agree with. The Olympic lifting part could be used for certain people for some really great effect because you do really use that core. You really do use a lot of the upper back muscles. I'm not built for it. It wouldn't be right for me, but some people might really get a lot of benefit out of it. But I would never, never, never do that like type of lift like a snatch or, or a power clean right from the floor and then lift it right up to the top i would never ever do that and then go run a mile and then come back and then do that again i would never do that 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 is just waiting you're going to injure yourself for sure yeah uh francis drake if i ever incorporated landmine presses i don't know what landmine presses are i have to look it up I've, i maybe i have maybe i haven't i don't know any squat tips for long fevers uh femurs uh horror biz yeah i'd look at my channel and just watch how i squat because i've got long femurs that's exactly how i squat so so i just uh one second i just accidentally scroll past somebody here it was asking me something sorry guys there's just so many comments it's hard to get through all of them here Okay, here we go. Do I have any pictures of me, uh, I guess, before I started bodybuilding? I'm sure my parents have some pictures somewhere, but I started bodybuilding or lifting weights when I was 14 years old, right? So I, I do have videos, though. If you look at my, uh, you know, uh, even my last video or two videos ago, I actually put up a video of what I looked like when I was 20 or 21 years old training. So you can take a look at there and uh, take a look at there. I don't know. I went Italian there for a second. Take a look at there. Okay, Godfather. Okay, you know, the reason why I started doing mountain, I don't know why, when I moved to Harrison Hot Springs, Canada, okay, um, there's these mountains and I go up on the logging road and I, I I basically just drive around and I film my videos up there. A lot of my spiritual videos I, I film up there and sometimes I get some bodybuilding videos at the same time. And I don't know, I just started uh, doing a native Indian voice, like that was just more stereotype because, you know, I have some native Indian background and some people are saying I look like a barbarian or I look like, you know, you get all this negativity on the internet. Some guy said, hey, do you beat your food before you eat it? That kind of stuff. I was getting that kind of negativity. So I thought, hey, that's kind of funny. So I started talking like I was just, uh, 
you know, mountain, like I was in the mountains and just looking out. So I started commenting on nature and stuff. And then also I just said mountain one time and I said, oh, that kind of sounds funny. And then I just started doing it because mountain, you know, mountain like biceps. And then at the same time mountains. And I thought, okay, it has some sort of fun ring to it. And I just started being kind of silly. And I just, uh, I guess I was bored one day. And uh, sometimes I just started playing from the camera. So some people, they hate it when I get, you know, crazy or I get kind of uh, goofy, but at the same time, uh, it's hard making a video all the time of the same type of stuff. And I, I like to be silly. I like to just find energy in different types of creative ways. And sometimes it's through making music and through training footage. And sometimes it's through being an idiot and through some sort of comedy. And I was laughing at it. So I was enjoying making the videos like that. So that's why I started doing it. So anyway, it's stuck. And then that's it. It's, it's been, been that way ever since. So that's where, where it came from. That's where mountain came from. Mountain. Okay. Freaky deaky. Well, running five miles a, a session, three to four times a week, mess up my lifting gains. My main goal is strength, uh, strength, endurance, not size. Uh, well, you know, there's only one way to find out there, big guy. <laughs> so it, it just depends. If you've been running five miles three or four times a week for all of your life or for a long time, and then you add training to it, see what happens to your body. Uh, see how your body adapts. And if you notice that you get to a certain point, but you can never get past that, then there is a possibility that you'll have to, at some point, choose between the two. Because your body is, is finely tuned. It will finely tune itself. It's like you can't have a drag car like that's good for the quarter mile. Uh, like you can't fix a car that will burn like a thousand liters of gas in about four seconds. And then have it also good for an endurance race, right? You have to choose one or the other. And the last thing that human body wants to do is gain muscle. And when you run, your body also will say, I don't want to gain muscle. That's another reinforcement of saying, I don't need muscle. Because when you run, you're only like doing this. You're barely even bending the legs. Jogging does not help muscle mass gains whatsoever. You don't even need any upper body whatsoever. All that is is a burden because your body's saying, oh, I got to carry more weight. It doesn't care what type of weight. It says, I got to carry more weight. Why would I want to do that? So it starts to shed pounds anywhere it can to become more efficient at doing that exercise. So you have to really look at, say, you know, what are, am I doing? What am I telling the body? What is my, my goal? And you say your goal is strength. Well, when you're burning yourself out all the time, burning all the calories off and stuff, um, you can probably increase your strength to weight ratio to a point by refining the nervous system. But there will be a point where you need to basically put on some muscle mass. And that will be the point where you won't necessarily get past when, when you're going to have to make a decision there. So, yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> are banded bench press better for bringing up legging triceps eh, i've never done them i've never done them but they, but maybe they can because the top portion is where you use a lot of tricep so it might might be might be true four banger love how you doing buddy yeah thanks yeah i'm glad that you're here uh okay day Devin Colburn, yeah, how you doing, man? Yeah, you don't comment, but uh, yeah, mountain. Zach Cat. <laughs> Any chance you can fly down to my house and lift with you a couple of days? Well, that depends what you're going to do. Are you going to uh, wash my car, uh, clean my clothes, and do all my video editing? <laughs> we'll see. You have to apply for a job, right? Yeah, that's... Imagine, imagine being like, it's so funny because like I've been in your position. I've actually been on, on people's live chats and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, I really like this person. This person seems like a nice person. Right. And then you're like, wow, you know, I want to be your friend, you know, type that in. I want to be your friend. And then you can see the person on their side of the screen. They're like, wow, this guy's a psycho. What's wrong with this person? <laughs> so I don't know if it would be very smart to move people in that you don't know <laughs> for a couple of days and say, come on in. And, and the funny thing is I have met a few people that are patrons of person stuff in person and they actually turned to be awesome people, like really great people. And, uh, and I know there's a lot of you guys that are pretty awesome. So when I meet you in person, like I have no problem if people want to, you know, I, I might organize an event at some point if this channel ever gets going enough that say, Hey, you know, Galantian conference of some sort, and, you know, maybe charge a bit of money to be able to rent a room for people to basically come conference up or whatever. But um, yeah, maybe one day that'll happen. And then I get to meet a lot of people in person. That would be fun. But uh, until that point, I don't think I'll be moving people into my house though, before I even know who they are. <laughs> it's good moving in a guy from 
Jason from Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's like I'm waking up this guy with an ax over my bed. Yeah, that would probably be a bad idea. <laughs> Anybody you don't know is sent by the devil. I, well, I don't, I don't know if that's true there, Lester, but <laughs> that's a good, uh, <laughs> that's a good attitude. Anybody I don't know is sent by the devil. Well, there's a lot of people on this planet I don't know, so we're in a lot of trouble, Lester. We're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay, high five salute. Speaking of spiritual, do you think meditation can help with muscle growth? Well, not, not directly. Uh, yeah, so don't don't meditate if you think it's just going to gain a muscle. But but what it will do is it'll bring a lot of clarity to your mind, which may help you be able to train and may in turn help you build muscle. It'll help you let go of any emotional or mental pain or noise you have around life in general. And therefore, you're not wasting all your energy in that area and you'll have more energy to pursue whatever is practically in front of you or your creative endeavors or whatever it might be. But it's, it's not going to just build muscle from meditating, no. Yes, Lester, I do have a wife, yeah. What is the body fat percentage for washboard abs? Depending on typical genetics, but I would say around 8% or 6 to 8% is you look pretty, pretty lean. Yeah, pretty lean. Hey, Luke Stevens has asked me about uh, forearm work. Do, um, do, do go watch my video on body parts I don't train, okay? It's, it's on here, and I talk about calves and forearms specifically in there. So just take a look at that, and you'll, you'll have the answer, yeah. Hmm. What do I think about calisthenics and those jacked-up park calisthenic exercises? I don't – Trevor, um, they're not jacked up. Most of these guys are not jacked up. Most of them are actually just – I've seen a lot of guys advertising in my newsfeed on Facebook, and they're like, yeah, how to gain muscle. And I look at the guy, and he's about 150 pounds soaking wet. And yeah, he's got abs, but he's got no muscle, really. And if his, his legs are non-existent. So this is the thing. Calisthenics will not do that. Some of these guys are just naturally lean, and then they say, oh, the calisthenics did it. Well, most likely the calisthenics didn't do it. It's diet that did it. And the calisthenics are just ways that they're basically flexing the muscles in front of the camera and getting a little bit of a pump. And there is some benefit to calisthenics. There's no doubt about that. But – you will not get jacked as far as big, big, and huge back and everything. That won't happen from calisthenics. I mean, pull-ups, you can get some decent width, yeah. But at some point, to get those traps and everything, you're going to have to put some weight on them. You're going to have to put some weight and bend over rows. You're going to have to build a leg somehow. How are you going to do that with calisthenics? You just can't, right? Uh, people's champ, do I ever measure my body fat? No, I never do. I just look in the mirror and say, oh, man, I'm fat. That's <laughs> important. Hey, Zorak, he goes, uh, he's, he cycles every day and he's 245 pounds. Cycling is different, Zorak, because it's constant tension and you are bending the legs. So there is a little bit of strength endurance involved in cycling as well. So that would be a less aggressive form of cardio than jogging. Okay, just so you know. Yeah. Are Arnold presses better than regular dumbbell shoulder presses? Absolutely not. I would say they're more dangerous for some people. They'll actually just compress your uh, bicep tendon and cause a bunch of problems that way. So. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them. How do I feel about hang cleans? I, uh, like if you're hanging, do you mean like hanging from the bar in a chin-up position or are you talking about something else? Or are you talking about hang cleans in front of your, like basically you hang the bar in front of your legs and then just clean the bar? A freaky deaky, can you explain stomach vacuum training? I said, and and do you recommend it? I said, I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's just stupid. It just it's just another trend people come up with, just like these freaking belts and stuff that hey, look and you know the pampers that people put on to hold their fun. <laughs> I mean, it's still core training. It is when you suck the stomach in. I'm not saying it isn't. Like when you suck the stomach in, the belly button to the spine, that is core training. And so there's something relevant about that. It's like activating your core. Okay, so I'm not saying that's wrong, but. Um, a lot of the paradigm of why people say they do it is, is to get their waist smaller and stuff. It doesn't really act that way. It, it's, it's not like that. Do I recommend any diets? Yeah, I, I recommend just watch my video on how to eat as a natural bodybuilder on here. And I have workout programs and everything at naturalglantbodybuilding.com. Yeah. 
t-shirts too, but they're not worn out like this. This one's worn out. I just beat the crap out of it. So, uh, David Doucette. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So David, why do you want to do it? Uh, that's the first question. Hang lifts. Why do you want to do the hang lifts? What's your goal? Uh, I never did them. So if you want to know what I did, um, like I, it depends on why you're asking me. Uh, but one thing I would say is, is it should be enough for you as an answer of saying, um, because you're asking me a question. So obviously you're interested in what my answer is. Uh, if I never did them, then there's probably a reason why I didn't, right? Now, I'm not saying there isn't things beyond my level of experience that are um, used. There probably is a lot of things. Um, but I find that hand cleans are more about activating those hamstrings, more for power. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they're good body blank exercise overall, just because I do think that they would play uh, a little bit of havoc on the shoulder in some cases when you're swinging that weight up constantly, right? Especially when you get into heavier weights, you could risk shoulder problems. And that's not necessarily, it's, it's more of a higher risk to move for the shoulders at some point when you get in the heavier weight, I'd say. Mountain. <laughs> Uh, tropical Fruit Loops, you need to watch my videos, Tropical Fruit Loops. You need to watch all my videos, and then you will know. You will know the answer to that question that you are asking right now about traditional deadlifts. You watch my videos on back training. You watch my videos on Romanian deadlifts. You watch my videos, and I explain it in all the videos. And you better watch the video right from 0 0.01 seconds to the, the very last second of the video. Don't you be clicking through or scrolling through crap. You pay attention to everything I'm saying because I give – jewels of advice in there all over the place and you will have the answer and if you are willing to go on this journey with me if you're willing to go on this journey you will have the answer the magical answer of whether i do deadlifts from the floor or not deal mountain do heavy squats and deadlifts thicken your waist i would say no they don't i did them my waist didn't thicken so Um, digweed, am I stronger than my father? I, yeah, I got stronger than my dad with bench press, like a lot stronger than my dad in bench press and squat. I was stronger, but deadlift. And then again, I didn't parallel squat as far as I couldn't get that parallel sort of thing. So that again, we're going to have to, you know, if my dad's watching this. He'll probably be like, yeah, you never squat a parallel. Right. So, but my dad's deadlift was insane. I mean, he could do 585 at 160 pound body weight or so. So he was, he was a pretty strong deadlifter. So. Uh, Jason, uh, do you watch Game of Thrones? Actually, I watched Game of Thrones and I read the books uh, a long time ago. I read all the books. There's one book, or I got to read the last two because I read the first three, four books, you know. Um, but yeah, I know I haven't, uh, like, I've watched the series. I was disappointed with the season eight, uh, some parts of it, but I'm not going to do any spoilers on here or anything because I know some people maybe have not watched it or not. But. Mm. Uh, Samuel, Stephen, there is no world in meditation. That's the thing. Uh, I don't take my meditation anywhere. The, the meditate, I just am. You, you, at some point, everything shifts, Samuel. Like when you're stuck in the mind, you will always associate the world and you, and you'll take you this and that. Your experiences matter. But at some point, you let go of the entire uh, root of experience itself, and you realize there's just this. That's it. It's just this. And then. You move through the world, but the meditation continues regardless of whether your eyes are closed or not. Lord of the Rings is great there, Donald Screech. Um, it was it's just different though. But but I would say the Game of Thrones books are, are pretty crazy, pretty crazy, a really good writing. Game um, George R. R. Martin is an amazing writer. Yeah. No, Godfather. Yeah, no. Thanks. Say thanks to your wife there, Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some people have been asking me, they're like, hey, do a tutorial video on dance. And I'm like, are they kidding or something? Or what are they doing? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, Francis Drake, I've never really done a lot of front squats because of my long femur, so I don't really do front squats. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, you'll have to kind of hit the – put the bar in this groove in here, and it's going to feel uncomfortable. 
it's it's not about comfort though. You know, some people they they look for comfort a little bit too much in training. I'm not saying you're one of these people, but uh, sometimes things are uncomfortable until one day they become not comfortable once your body's adapted to it. The one thing that you want to be careful of is that you don't want that thing to slip. Because I know one guy, he was doing front squats and it slipped and he caught it and he actually tore uh, a muscle in here because he basically tried to catch it somehow. And uh, and uh, that shoulder issue has been a problem for him ever since. So, yeah, just be careful with that. <laughs> People's wives want you to see that. would be funny. Okay. Do I incorporate pranayama into my workouts? I really should sleep now. Cheers. Uh, I, I, I incorporate pranayama sometimes at the end of my workouts. That's a breathing technique for you guys that don't know what pranayama is. Like if there's something called fire breath, like <laughs> if you do that for 30 seconds to a minute, that's it. Just 30 seconds to a minute, you'll notice that your head feels totally different after. So there's certain positions sometimes you can put the body in and do that type of breath and it helps clear out certain meridians or energy centers there. May help uh, clear out chronic trigger points, that sort of thing. So I don't do that breath during exercises because that might be a disaster. But at the same time, sometimes I'll do that as a part of uh, physical practice to, to blow out the energy, to, to recycle the energy, make sure everything's moving properly, right? Favorite upper chest exercise? I, I'd just say the standard uh, dumbbell incline, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, Shvetty Balls. <laughs> That's a funny name. That's hilarious. Jason, what professional wrestler, in your opinion, gave the best interviews? I would say a macho man, Randy Savage. He was the, he was he was the king, man. I just love that guy. <laughs> Favorite TV shows, sitcoms, drama. Okay, uh, what, my sitcoms. I liked Three's Company back in the day and Good Times and all those because I grew up with those when I was a kid. Uh, but like Big Bang Theory, I love Big Bang Theory. Actually, I got to watch the isn't it the premiere or the season ending or the actual ending of the show tonight, the last one. Uh, I like Big Bang Theory, and uh, I liked Breaking Bad. That's not a sitcom, but Breaking Bad, those types of series, I like that stuff. And um, Netflix, I, I watch um, what is it, The Protector? Actually, that's made in, in Istanbul, Turkey, or something like that. That was actually not too bad. So check that out if you haven't checked that out. Actually, check that out. It's pretty good. Okay, People's Champ 64, do you ever drink or eat anything special before workouts? I've heard some people eat bananas or drinking chocolate milk to act as a pre-workout. I, I usually have coffee and, and some sugar. Like I'll have a double-double from Tim Hortons or something like that. Or I'll have some BCAAs, right? Just straight branch chains with some stevia. I'll drink that. Um, that's that's about it. Nothing nothing too special. Yeah. Sometimes I'll have a mocha, a non-fat mocha from Starbucks. That's that's quite a common thing for me too, yeah. So there is some sugar in there too to, to, and some chocolate. And there has been some study of chocolate and coffee actually being good for workouts. I don't know why, but. Yeah. Good night there, Syria. Yeah. Yeah, drama. I never take a pre-workout as far as caffeine type stuff. I'll have coffee or something, but I don't take a, like a pre-workout that way. No. Okay. Yeah, people's champs. A few people told me I remind them of Brett the Hitman Hart in some way. Yeah. He's Brett, Brett the Hitman is probably very insulted now as he's watching this video. He's probably like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, yeah, freaky deaky. How about whiskey and deadlifts? Now I don't drink, man. I, alcohol just like, man, it wreaks havoc on my body. I don't, I don't like it. I, I mean, I, I don't believe in it anyway. But at the same time, it's it's horrible for my my stomach and stuff. It's not good. Yeah. Hmm. Anonymous person is telling me to kill myself. Well, that's that's nice. Hey, you know what? I already killed myself. I already did, and that's why there's a new thing here, new guy here. I, it's like I die in every moment, and here I am. Oh, I just died again. Oh, 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 there I am, here again. Cool. <laughs> that's a great part about being immortal. I'm like Highlander. Okay. All right. I think I think this is going to be pretty good. I think uh, I think I'm going to have something to eat now. 
Francis Drake, have I ever smoked cigarettes? No, never tried them, never, never. I was always disgusted by that stuff. That stuff never really appealed to me. Okay, okay, Andrew, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, Avarice, Avarice is asking, what would I do suggest for an intermediate lifter? I'd, I'd suggest going to my my actual website, naturalglantbodybuilding.com, and buying one of the workout programs. There's some pretty good workout programs on there that I wrote myself, and it's not like somebody else wrote them, and you can try them out, and uh, I think you'll like them, actually. I think you'll, you'll think you, they're money well spent. Godfather, do I have a video on incline dumbbells? Yeah, yeah, I, a lot of videos I'm doing incline dumbbell presses. Yeah, a lot of them. Who is my favorite artist? Bodybuilding.com, yeah. Hey, uh, Omar uh, Alatabi or whatever. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. The, the print's pretty small. Uh, what's my diary now? Watch my video on how to eat as a natural bodybuilder, and that'll give you some ideas, okay? Okay, so I'm not getting the answers um, from somebody. Somebody asked me a question. Uh, what are my thoughts about using a swim machine for deadlifts? I, uh, you know, if, if you find it works for you, that's fine. You might have to position your feet in a certain way in order to make sure it works. But, uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, powerlifting deadlifts, it might be, it might be a little rough because it, it just depends. I don't know. You're just going to have to play around with it, but I've never done it. I've never found that it was necessary anyway. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to say bye now. I'm going to end this stream, and I will have another video up pretty soon here. So make sure that you leave comments and share my stuff if you can. I mean, that really helps me out. And if you want to support these live streams and stuff like that, just go on Patreon and uh, become a Patreon supporter under Natural Galant Bodybuilding. So thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. I'll put up another video, and uh, yeah, maybe I will do a live stream in the future if everybody's nice to me. <laughs>